So like, I ain't gonna have them problems. You know, like I'm Gucci, I'm good. I ain't gonna have no hemp boy problems. <laughs> <laughs> hey y'all and welcome back to my channel i am i'm legit so excited to be recording today i haven't been able to record in a very long time i haven't been able to sit down and record in a very long time but um i did film my baby shower video which was about a month ago so well it's been a little bit over a month at this point but that's the last video that i uploaded and i haven't been able to sit in front of this camera for a very long time because as you all know baby girl is pregnant um and so other baby girl has not been allowing me to have as much um capabilities <laughs> as i was before i was so far along um i am currently nine months pregnant and by the time you all see this she will probably I don't know she'll probably be here or like i am like inching towards the last second of her being here so right now we have about a week and three days left before her due date so um we're just preparing i haven't really talked about like the journey of my pregnancy unless you see me on instagram if you don't follow me on instagram my name on there is the same thing as here kicking it with ty but i asked in one of my captions what you all wanted to see and somebody recommended that I do a pregnancy update um, and do my makeup. So I am going to do things that I did not know before I got pregnant. Things they didn't tell me. They didn't tell me before I got pregnant. These are the things that like, I was like, so why y'all ain't warn me? <laughs> like, why ain't nobody tell me? Like what am i doing i'm over here googling thinking i'm dying and i'm really not it's a normal part of pregnancy and i'm like why ain't nobody tell me <laughs> so i'm here to tell you if you are currently pregnant these are some of the things that you might want to pay attention to or might look out for or if it happens to you just know that it's normal <laughs> let's go ahead and get started all right so first and foremost i'm just going to start off with a moisturizer this is just um the moisturizer that i'm using is different moisturizer normally i wouldn't use this on like regular people but i use it on myself because i am acne prone so i like using this in my daily routine but anyway so the first thing is something really minimal but i thought it was really um cool is that i didn't know that you could know that you were pregnant as fast as I knew I was pregnant so when I got <laughs> when I got pregnant I knew I would say almost immediately right so as you saw in my um, pregnancy announcement video I was talking about how my my bonus daughter knew that I was pregnant before I knew I was pregnant so she I knew I was pregnant the week that I got pregnant she knew that I was pregnant the day that I was pregnant I'm using the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop uh, Mattifying Primer. So if I didn't list the product or if I don't say a product, it's gonna be listed below. So don't worry. This is Morphe's Brow Pencil in the shade Mocha. I really feel like my body is being so different. It's acting so much more different than I've ever experienced in my life. And I just feel like I might be pregnant. I, when I got home, from DR, I got home on August 14th. And when I got home, I was driving and all of a sudden I got car sick. And I'm like, how did, how am I, how am I getting car sick while I'm driving? Like I never, ever, 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 ever get car sick when I'm driving. I would have, I would be driving and then I would have to like stop to regroup and to like to like gather myself again and make myself feel like i could actually like like function right now i'm using sephora's um concealer in i don't i think this is nutmeg in number 11 and i mixed it with my foundation the lancome um tuzzy doll in shade 470. i had no clue i've seen um don't be a menace to society while drinking juice in the hood right if you haven't seen that movie go watch it right so it's so funny but i think it's jada actually jada pinkett 
that's in the mo in the movie and she sleeps with Marlon, she's like, I'm pregnant. Like immediately. I'm pregnant. Already? Are you sure? And I don't know why that scene has always stuck with me, but <laughs> I just don't, I didn't think that you could really like actually know the moment that you were pregnant. I'm using the Juvia's Place chocolate palette and I'm using that nude color that's in there. But I didn't know that somebody could really know that they were pregnant like that quickly. And then when I found out that I was pregnant, like literally the week of me being pregnant, I was like, bruh, <laughs> that's crazy. Like I know my exact conception day. I know my exact due day. So nobody told me that you could actually know exactly when you're pregnant, when you are pregnant. The next thing they didn't tell me, right? They didn't tell me you only get ultrasounds. You only get, basically, you only get two ultrasounds in your entire pregnancy. What? I'm using Morphe's Trailblazer, their bronzer. I'm using that in, the, in my crease. First of all, they don't give you, they don't tell you that you don't get an ultrasound to confirm that you're actually pregnant. So I didn't get an ultrasound to confirm that I was actually pregnant. I just got an ultrasound once I did confirm that I was pregnant through the, through the pregnancy test that they give you. I had my first ultrasound at 12 weeks. And the only reason why I had an ultrasound at 12 weeks is because they wanted to confirm. I went to my midwife and she was trying to find baby's heart rate, heart rate on the Doppler. But because the baby was so small and I knew I was pregnant so early, they normally don't even do those ultrasounds until 12 weeks. So I went in at 11 weeks. So that's why she sent me to an OBGYN and the OBGYN, this was my midwife giving me a little, hey, you wanna see your baby early? Let me help you out type of situation. So she put on there that they couldn't find the, the fetus's heart rate. So pause for a second. The only reason that you get ultrasounds throughout your entire pregnancy, aside from the anatomy scan, is if something is wrong. Nobody told me that. The only way that you actually get those and get more than one is when they confirm your baby that you're actually pregnant and they wanna find the baby's fetal heart rate, they can't find it on the Dobbler, they'll, they'll put in a special code that allows you to go get a, a ultrasound. And then the second thing, technically the only ultrasound that you normally get is the anatomy scan. And the anatomy scan is basically where they just check out baby to make sure baby has all of their limbs, has baby is growing correctly, baby has you know a four chamber heart, baby's blood is going to the you know the heart correctly like that's what they check at that appointment which is the anatomy scan and that anatomy scan doesn't happen until 20 weeks so after that 20 weeks you get no no ultrasounds of your baby unless something is wrong now at 20 weeks you're halfway there there's 40 weeks in pregnancy so you have 20 more weeks to wait and figure out whoa <laughs> what your baby looks like or like is your baby even okay like i feel like me seeing my baby allowed me to have some type of security like i felt like it was like okay everything was going right everything was good baby girl was good and me seeing her on an ultrasound was what was allowing me to feel and and like to feel like she was okay like she was you know what i mean like it was what was allowing me to, to feel like my pregnancy was going well. And as a new first time mom, you don't know what this is supposed to be like. You don't know what it's supposed to feel like. But at the same time, like you have so many worries, so many worries, so many fears that come along that you honestly have no control over of like, uncertainties on whether or not your baby's gonna make it or you know fears or just like just weird stuff that pops up in your head that you try to stay away from but ultimately it's there and it's it, it consistently comes back over and over and over again and 
the fact that you can't see your child or you can't see what's happening inside of you, you can literally only feel her, is what is so, it's so weird and it's so disheartening, but at the same time, it's like, what, what do you do? Thankfully, in my situation, I was able to see her, I was, I was able to have, I had a total of five ultrasounds um, in my pregnancy because, not because anything was wrong, thankfully, thank God, but because at 20 weeks, I went to go get my anatomy scan and my daughter would not, she would not lay straight. Like at one point, and I'm gonna put an ultrasound in here right now, you'll be able to see like she's literally laying down and her head is in between her legs. Like she was not trying to straighten out. She was not trying to like, you know, lay correctly so that they could actually get all of her like body parts and see them in the ultrasound to be able to tell, like make sure that everything was okay. So I had to keep coming back. I had to go, I had to go back four times for my ultrasounds. Right now I'm using Lancome's Tonsi Doll and NARS um, Natural Radiance in the shade Bellum and I'm mixing it with Tonsi Doll's 470. You hear so many horror stories, you hear so many just things that people go through and you just don't want to be that person. And so you worry, as non-worrisome as I am. And as non, I just, I, I just never thought I would be that person. And now here I am stressing out about my daughter and making sure that I can, you know, she's well and, you know, and she's doing fine and nothing's going wrong and da 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 da. Because remember, like all of your doctor's appointments are a month apart. So you're going, you're going a full month without knowing anything. And then once you actually do get to the doctors, like it's a, it's a month later and you're just hoping and praying that they hear her heartbeat on the Dobler again, or that, you know, you just hope ev that everything is okay. The next thing that they did not tell your girl about, okay? Next thing that they did not tell me about was pregnancy constipation. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, pre pregnancy constipation is 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 constipation on <laughs> is constipation on another level. Like it is not for the weak or faint at heart, okay? Pregnancy constipation is literally, I just, I don't understand. I don't, I don't know how people who deal with constipation on a regular basis, like, I don't know how they do it <laughs> because I literally be wanting to be out here and like, I just wanna like, take me, take me to the king. <laughs> like, because I just cannot, I can, I, I, I literally, I tried, but I can't. Like I literally tried, but I just can't. Like pregnancy constipation is just on a whole nother level. It's on a whole nother level. You literally feel like you need to go and then you, you try to go and you can't. So you're literally sitting there for hours on end trying to go to the restroom and cannot. And you can't sit on the toilet for too long because you know how they tell you if you sit on the bathroom too long, your inside's gonna turn inside out. So I was like, I can't sit on this toilet too. <laughs> I can't sit on this toilet too long. Y'all gotta forget me. But literally pregnancy constipation and it's, 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 it's literally all day, every day. It's every single day that you're dealing with this. And this started, I would say this started at like my second trimester once baby girls started getting bigger. I'm using YSL Souffle, Souffle Declan. They don't sell this anymore, but this is in the shade four, number four. And then that leads me to the next thing. Nobody warned your girl about hemorrhoids. So here I am, like, I'm sorry y'all, this is getting graphic, but whatever. Y'all are adults, you'll be all right. But hemorrhoids, are like, you think hemorrhoids are like for old people, you know? Like you always, preparation H and all that stuff. And you're like, bro, like, I ain't, I'm not gonna have no hemorrhoids. Like I'm a young person. I, I could go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I ain't gonna have them problems. 
You know, like, I'm Gucci. I'm good. I ain't gonna have no hemorrhoid problem. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what they were and I didn't know what they look like because obviously I've never had hemorrhoids before. So when I realized what they look like, I Googled it and I was like, um, uh, my inside's coming out. <laughs> I Googled it and it came up as prolapsed retro seal, which basically means that your insides, your intestines are coming out of you. But they look very similar to, to hemorrhoids. So when I text my midwife, I was like, um, I think I have prolapsed rectum. And she was like, hemorrhoids. <laughs> you have hemorrhoids. You're dealing with hemorrhoids because what happens is when you get pregnant, you're obviously your intestines and your organs and your body and all of the above are being shifted because of the baby. So the pressure of the baby sitting on your insides is what's pushing all of your intestines down. You are, you are never ready for it, ever. You're never, never ready for it. And then when, you, when it happens, you're like, what is this? <laughs> when you get pregnant, you, it is possible that you can have hemorrhoids, okay? Don't be alarmed. <laughs> Don't be alarmed, they are normal and they will go back <laughs> to normal, okay? Don't be alarmed. All right, so the next thing that they did not warn Sister Girl about, okay? Third trimester insomnia. Third trimester insomnia. I have never in my life been somebody who cannot sleep, okay? Your girl, when she is ready to sleep, I'm using the Morphe Trailblazer again. When baby girl is ready to sleep, when I am ready to sleep, I sleeps, okay? When your girl walked into her third trimester, okay? I don't know what came over my body, but it decided that it would no longer be interested in sleeping or falling asleep as we have fallen asleep previously. All of a sudden, my body decided that it no longer, not only did it not want to fall asleep, but it didn't want to stay asleep once I fell asleep. So I would sleep for like an hour and then I would wake up or two hours and then I would wake up and I would be up for the rest of the night. I love sleep. <laughs> like, I don't think y'all understand. I adore sleep. Sleeping was a huge change. And not only that, your stomach has now grown, so you can't sleep in the same positions that you would like to. Before I got pregnant, I was always a stomach sleeper or a back sleeper. And they tell you in your third trimester that you should not sleep on your back, you should not sleep on your stomach. Obviously, you can't sleep on your stomach. If you're a stomach sleeper, you have to sleep on your side. One thing I will say that helped me with figuring out how to sleep on my side was getting a pregnancy pillow. Another thing, quick thing that they didn't tell me about was that your nipples get darker. Like your whole areola gets darker as you get further along in your pregnancy, okay? <laughs> I was, I woke up one day and I was like, whose nipples is, <laughs> whose is these? Wherever mine are, tell them to come back because this ain't it, this ain't it. They got so dark, I was just like, and I'm like, I love my breasts, I love my titties, I love how pretty they are, I love, I just loved looking at them. I loved their essence. And then all of a sudden to see how dark they have transitioned as far as the areolas, I was very, very distraught. I wasn't ready. I, I wasn't ready for the transition, the change. And, my, and then my midwife told me, the reason why it gets darker is because baby needs to be able to recognize them. Like when baby's eyes, when baby comes out, their eyes are not as, like their, their vision, is not as profound as it is as like you go along. So they need to have like, it's like a target for them. Like, <laughs> like here goes your <laughs> here goes your breast milk. Like that's how they see where it is that they need to go. So your breast and your nipples get darker so that they can be able to see the area or recognize where to go. Imagine waking up and then all of a sudden your breasts are just a completely different shade. Like, that is traumatizing. The next thing that they did not warn your girl about, 
this is probably the biggest thing I am upset with all y'all pregnant moms, all the or, or all y'all y'all moms that went through pregnancy already, all of y'all. I'm I'm I am the most upset with y'all about this one. You know what it was? It's called lightning crotch. Okay. <laughs> if you don't know what lightning crotch is, let me go ahead and fill you in. Lightning crotch is basically where your baby is sitting on a nerve that is in your pelvic area and that nerve sends this lightning shock to your vagina it literally, literally feels like somebody took an electrical wire like somebody wanted to put you in an electric chair okay they wanted to put you in an electric chair and they wanted to attach your vagina lips to an electrical shock. And they decided to play a little game and be like, Bleep! electric shock. Like it, it is the most, it will literally send you to your knees. It, it, it will send you to your knees. It will send you to your face. It will have you flat on the floor when it happens. Okay? And it's not just one time when it happens, it consistently, whenever your, your child decides that they wanna move in a certain way, <laughs> the shock goes directly into your vagina. And you, uh, imagine, your vagina is already the most delicate part of you, okay? It is your, <laughs> it is literally the softest, the most kindest part of your body to now be electrocuted. <laughs> it, it's called lightning crotch. Y'all look up lightning crotch and see what it says on Google. Just go ahead and look it up and see what it says. Y'all don't know exactly what I feel. I, exactly how I described it to you is exactly how it feels. Like somebody took two electrical cords, somebody was jumping a car and they decided, let me put these two little clamps on your vagina lips. Click, clitoris. Another quick thing that they didn't tell me about is this thing called hiatal hernia, okay? Hiatal hernia. These are all things that I'm figuring out on my own now. Hiatal hernia, and I'm not self-diagnosing. Don't, I'm not a doctor, okay? This is my little disclaimer. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a specialist. I can't tell you what you got. I'm not gonna self-diagnose you, but if you got some of these symptoms, you might wanna ask about it. You might wanna talk to your doctor about it. Hiatal hernia is something that a lot of doctors and a lot of midwives do not know about, right? Because hiatal hernia actually deals with not just your heart, not just your stomach, not just your esophagus, but it deals with all of them. It doesn't just deal with your lungs, it deals with all of them in one. So a lot of doctors, a lot of like pulmonologists only deal with your lungs, right? Cardiologists only deal with your heart. People that, I don't know what the name is of people that deal with your stomach, but they only deal with your stomach. So when you go to somebody and you tell them, I'm having these type of symptoms and I'm about to explain what they are, they will run tests. Like if I'm telling you I'm having heart issues or I'm feeling my heart is racing, they're gonna check your heart. And if your heart is fine, they can be like, you're fine. So hiatal hernia is basically what happens is you, in your nine months of pregnancy, at, the, at that time when your body starts to get no more space and baby is basically pushing up on every organ that you have in your body, something that can happen is your, so you have your esophagus, right? And your esophagus, esophagus then connects to this little elastic part of, excuse me, at the end of your esophagus that basically keeps any food from coming back up, right? So this is where acid reflux happens. This is where your heartburn happens because what's happening with baby is that the food or the baby is pushing up against all of your organs. And so your food is not being able to digest in the way that it should. So, or not able to go down into your stomach in the way that it should. So your stomach is right under your rib cage, right? So you go, the, the food goes down the esophagus. You have that little you know, thing that opens and closes. It keeps things from going up. And, it, and it's supposed to keep things down, right? So with your diaphragm and all of that and you're breathing, right? So when you're breathing, your diaphragm is supposed to go up and down and like big muscles, right? 
But when you don't have space and your baby is pushing up against your 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 is pushing up against your stomach, your stomach then pushes up against your esophagus. And your esophagus, basically the, the, the elastic part that is supposed to keep that closed and shut, is now being pushed up. The stomach is being pushed up into that. And then it now causes your body to not get as much oxygen in like a split second. It causes your, baby, your body not to get enough oxygen in its system. So then you're getting oxygen, oxygen, you're able to breathe, but you're not getting as much as your body is used to getting, right? So your body all of a sudden freaks out. And it's like, oh my God, you're not getting enough oxygen. You're not breathing the way that you should. And so it freaks out and it sends a signal to your brain, which then sends a signal to your heart that you need to, your body needs to pump more blood into your system in order for you to be able to get the oxygen that you need in order to survive, right? The only problem is you just chilling. And you, you might be laying on the bed, you might be, you know, you might be sitting on the couch or something and then all of a sudden your body freaks out and your your heart starts racing. Like literally you feel like your heart is about to pump out of your 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 chest, okay? And you feel like it's expanding, but it happens for like 0.2 seconds you're having heart palpitations and then all of a sudden it stops. Freakiest thing in the world, right? So now you can imagine somebody like me who's just chilling I'm laying in my bed and all of a sudden I start having heart palpitations out of this world like doo, 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 doo. and you're like oh my god what am I like what is happening like am I, am I dying am I having a heart attack like what is this what what is happening right now I'm using the Juvia's Place chocolate palette as, uh, again and I'm using the brown this brown sorry my palette is ugly child but I'm using that on my cheeks right now to add a little bit more warmth, warmth. but imagine that happening to you you're like what is happening and you keep googling you keep asking everybody else have they ever dealt with it during pregnancy and everybody else is telling you no they've never had that symptom they've never dealt with that your midwives are telling you it's nothing to worry about you don't know you don't have an answer to it your your doctors your OBGYNs are all telling you they've never experienced it the only thing you can do is go to a cardiologist who is going to check out your heart and then they tell you everything is normal so now you're sitting there like I know it. I know I, I'm not dying, obviously, because everything seems normal with me. But obviously, something is not something is not normal, or something's happening in my body, and I don't have an answer as to why it's happening. Finally, I went on YouTube and I googled heart palpitation in pregnancy, and this video pops up, and it, it literally explained every single symptom that I was that I was feeling. I was feeling heart palpitations. I was feeling like my my I had I didn't have chest pains to insinuate a heart attack, but I was having chest pressure. And that's a big difference because the pressure was more towards the back of my body versus the front of my body. So I'm having chest pressure, I'm having heart palpitations, and it would only happen for a split second and then everybody would tell me that I'm fine. So I'll watch the video. If you're interested, I'll put it down in the link in the description box below. But I was so, I was so I was I was like, oh my God, finally an answer to what it is that I'm actually dealing with. Now I didn't, you know, like I said, I'm not a doctor, so I can't diagnose myself, but that answer for me, that gave me enough information to feel comfortable and to feel like, okay, I'm not like I'm not crazy. Somebody knows what I'm talking about, right? Probably like one in a trillion people who deal with it. People that are not pregnant can actually deal with this too. So it might just, you know, if you've ever dealt with that, something like that, you might want to look into it. Um, but it's literally like heart palpitations for like 0.2 seconds and then all of a sudden it goes away. So enough talking about that. They didn't warn me about it. They didn't warn me about it. This is Morphe's um, continuous setting spray. I love this stuff. <sighs> My face is, <laughs> this is beat. I'm gonna end the video with this. They did not warn me about the fact that you can actually love being pregnant and you can love your body while you are pregnant. And you can actually love your body more pregnant than you did before you got pregnant. <laughs> I absolutely adore, 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 adore my body. Adore my body right now. I am so in love with my body 
I feel the most beautiful. I feel like I could conquer the world. I don't know why. I just, I really just love the way that I look pregnant. I love the way that I feel. Granted, I don't always feel the best, you know, in my pregnancy. I've, um, you know, when you go through pregnancy, a lot changes in your body. This is Joe Michelle. Joe Michelle Cosmetics. What is it? Joe Michelle Pro Makeup. Joe Michelle Pro Makeup. She's a uh, makeup artist and has a cosmetics line. It's one of my favorite glosses. And this is the shade One Love. But they didn't tell me that you could actually, I love it here, you could actually really enjoy being pregnant, really enjoy loving your body, and really enjoy just, just love, you just love being here. Like, I really love being here. I love being pregnant. And I really feel like God is playing a trick on me because I might want to do this again. And I've always said that I did not want children before I got pregnant. And then I met my husband and I absolutely wanted to build a life with him. And I absolutely wanted to um, expand our family and to, to create more of us together in this world. And so the fact that I am pregnant right now is just absolutely amazing. I love, love, love being pregnant. Um, I love my body. I love, I just love this whole thing. I had a very, very easy pregnancy. Thank God. Um, and I'm just honored that I'm able to carry my baby girl and to see her um, develop and, and to see what she's going to look like. Like, I have no idea what my daughter's going to look like. And it's so insane but i'm excited to meet her and excited to see her and yeah so this is our finished look it's my new mom look it's still glam it's still cute but we're not doing much eyeshadow <laughs> these days still be face thank you so much for watching thank you so much for tuning in um and checking out my video my three third trimester um video update and st sticking with me along <laughs> hearing all of the things that they didn't warn me about during my pregnancy but i'm so grateful to be here i'm so honored to be somebody's mom and to be you know walking into this new journey hopefully the next time you all see this video i will actually be an official mom mom and baby girl will be here um let me know down in the comments what you guys want to see next i am thinking about filming my birth um my birth it's at an at home birth so if you want to see that let me know down in the comment section maybe we can have my doula come on and answer some questions um <clears throat> just talk about you know what a doula is and why i chose to have one and what the process is and stuff like that maybe i can talk about that let me know down in the in the um comment section what you guys are thinking what you guys want to see and until next time thank you so much for kicking in with me and thank you so much for watching thank you so much for being here i appreciate y'all so much make sure y'all follow me on instagram kicking it with ty and yeah until next time i appreciate y'all thanks so much for kicking it with ty